on 29th June 2007. Steve Jobs unveiled something that would forever alter the course of technology and reshape our lives. It was a device that promised to revolutionize the way we listen to music, browse the web and connect it with the world. But as with any transformative innovation, it came at a cost. As the world marveled at the sleek design and remarkable capabilities of this new creation, it unwittingly sounded the death knell for one of the smartest and most prominent players in the mobile industry, BlackBerry. In this video, we embark on a journey to explore how the iPhone, a symbol of progress and innovation, inadvertently became the harbinger of doom for BlackBerry, a once mighty giant in the smartphone world. Join us as we unravel the story of how this David and Goliath battle unfolded in the ever-evolving landscape of technology. Our story begins in 1999 in Waterloo, Canada, where a small tech company named Research in Motion was quietly brewing something revolutionary. They believed that communication should be at your fingertips, quite literally, and so they set out to create a device that combined the functions of a pager and a mobile phone. Little did they know, this would be the spark that ignited BlackBerry's meteoric rise. In the early 2000s, BlackBerry unveiled its first device, the BlackBerry 850, a sleek and sophisticated pager with a full QWERTY keyboard. The world was captivated by this elegant and efficient tool and business professionals quickly adopted it for its secure email capabilities. But this was just the beginning. The BlackBerry's true moment in the sun came with the introduction of the BlackBerry 5810 in 2002. It was more than just a messaging device, it was a full-fledged smartphone. Users could make calls, send emails and even browse the web. It was a game changer in the tech world and people couldn't get enough. The real secret to BlackBerry's success, however, lay in its proprietary messaging platform known as BlackBerry Messenger or BBM. BBM allowed users to exchange messages and files seamlessly and its iconic ping notification became a cultural phenomena. Suddenly, Everyone wanted a BlackBerry to be part of this exclusive club. As BlackBerry's popularity soared, it became the smartphone of choice for business executives, politicians and celebrities alike. Its reputation for security and reliability made it the go-to device for handling sensitive information. It was so popular that it earned the nickname CrackBerry due to its addictive nature. But BlackBerry wasn't content with just the corporate world. They aimed to conquer the consumer market as well. In 2007, they launched the BlackBerry Pearl a more consumer-friendly device that still retained the iconic QWERTY keyboard. It was a hit attracting a younger audience. Then came the BlackBerry Curve in 2007 and the BlackBerry Bold in 2008, both sleek and stylish devices that further solidified BlackBerry's dominance in the smartphone arena. They seemed unstoppable. But every empire has its Achilles heel. In this case, it was the arrival of a new contender and it was none other than the iPhone. In the early 2000s, while BlackBerry was basking in the glory of its sleek and efficient smartphones, a revolution was quietly brewing in the heart of a Silicon Valley. It was a revolution led by a man with a paunch of a turtleneck sweaters and a passion for changing the way we interacted with technology. Steve Jobs Our story of the iPhone's emergence as a paradigm shift begins in 2007, a year that would change the tech world forever. In January of that year, Steve Jobs took the stage at Macworld Expo in San Francisco and the world would never be the same again. Jobs, a master showman, began by describing three groundbreaking devices, a wide skin iPod with touch controls, a revolutionary mobile phone and a breakthrough internet communication device. But as the audience leaned in, he declared, are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. An iPod a phone, and an internet communicator, an iPod, a phone, are you getting it? These are not three separate devices, this is one device, and we are calling it iPhone. With those words, Jobs unveiled the iPhone and the room erupted in applause. What they were witnessing was not just a phone, it was a vision of the future. It was a device that combined music, phone calls and internet browsing into one sleek and elegant package. 
the iPhone's design was a work of art. Its minimalist aesthetic with a smooth glass front and a single home button felt like something out of a sci-fi movie. It had a 3.5 inch touch screen display that was unlike anything anyone had seen before. It responded to gestures, pinches and swipes with grace and precision. The virtual keyboard was intuitive and for the first time typing on a touch screen felt natural. But the real magic lay in the operating system iOS. It was a game changer. The iPhone offered an intuitive and immersive user experience that made other smartphones feel clunky and outdated. It had a visual voicemail feature that allowed users to see and select voicemails, revolutionizing the way we interacted with our phones. And then there was the App Store. In July 2008, Apple introduced the App Store, a marketplace where developers could create and sell applications for the phone. This was a game changer that transformed the iPhone into a platform for endless possibilities. From games to productivity tools, the App Store had it all and it grew at an astonishing pace. The iPhone's impact on the smartphone industry was seismic. It didn't just compete with existing smartphones, it redefined the entire category. Other companies scrambled to catch up, but the iPhone's combination of hardware, software and ecosystem was hard to replicate. Consumers fell in love with the iPhone's sleek design, user-friendly interface and the endless possibilities offered by the App Store. It was more than just a phone, it was a status symbol, a fashion statement and a personal assistant all rolled into one. As the iPhone gained popularity, BlackBerry and other smartphone manufacturers found themselves struggling to keep up. The paradigm had shifted and the world was now enamored with touchscreen, apps and a new way of interacting with technology. In just a few short years, the iPhone had not only emerged but it became the gold standard of smartphones. It was a symbol of innovation, a testament to what was possible when visionary thinking met cutting-edge technology. And so, our story of the iPhone's emergence as a paradigm shift sets the stage for the clash of titans between BlackBerry and Apple, a battle that would ultimately reshape the smartphone landscape forever. Stay tuned for the next chapter as we delve into how the iPhone's rise led to the downfall of Blackberries and the end of an era in the tech world. As the iPhone soared to unprecedented heights, BlackBerry found itself standing at a crossroads, staring at a future filled with uncertainty. The world had witnessed a paradigm shift and BlackBerry was about to face its most formidable challenge yet, a battle for relevance. In the aftermath of the iPhone's launch, BlackBerry tried to adapt to the changing landscape. They released touchscreen devices like the BlackBerry Storm and the BlackBerry Torch, attempting to compete with Apple's touch-centric approach. However, these efforts fell short. BlackBerry's loyal user base was accustomed to physical keyboards and the new devices didn't resonate. The company also faced stiff competition from Android-powered smartphones, which offered a wide range of options and customization. The Android ecosystem was growing rapidly and BlackBerry was struggling to keep pace. Meanwhile, Apple's iOS continued to evolve and captivate users with each new iteration. One of BlackBerry's strengths had always been its focus on security and reliability making it the go-to choice for businesses and government agencies. However, even in this domain, it faced challenges. Apple, recognizing the importance of security, began improving its security features, making the iPhone viable option for corporate use. BlackBerry's edge was eroding. As if that weren't enough, BlackBerry faced internal turmoil, leadership changes, layoffs, and a lack of clear vision plagued the company. It seemed they couldn't decide whether to cater to their loyal enterprise customers or pivot towards the consumer market. This indecision left them in a vulnerable position. The app ecosystem was another Achilles heel for BlackBerry. While Apple's App Store thrived with hundreds of thousands of apps, BlackBerry's app world struggled to attract developers. This storage of apps made the platform less appealing to consumers who were increasingly looking for a rich and diverse app experience. Despite all these challenges, BlackBerry still had a glimmer of hope. Their loyal corporate customer base remained steadfast and the company continued to innovate in areas like secure messaging, and mobile management solutions. But it was a battle on multiple fronts, and the time was not on their side. In 2013, BlackBerry launched its last ditch effort to regain relevance with the BlackBerry 10 operating system. It offered features like the BlackBerry Hub, which consolidated emails and notifications into a single, easily accessible interface. While it garnered some positive reviews, it was too little, too late. By this point, the world had moved on. BlackBerry's struggles had been well documented in the media and the perception of the brand had shifted from a symbol of innovation to one of a decline. Sales continued to plummet and the company faced massive financial losses. And so, the battle for relevance had taken its toll on BlackBerry. 
the company that had once revolutionized communication and dominated the smartphone market was now fighting for its survival. The world watched as a once great giant struggled to find its footing in a rapidly evolving tech landscape. In the next chapter of our video, we will explore the final act in BlackBerry's dramatic story, its fall from grace and how the iPhone ultimately sealed its fate. Stay tuned as we witness the end of an era in the tech world, a story of rise, struggle and ultimate transformation. As we delve deeper into the story of BlackBerry, we come to its darkest hour, a chapter that reveals the harsh realities of the tech world, the fall from grace. It's a story of missed opportunities, internal strife and lessons in innovation that should serve as a cautionary tale for us all. By 2013, BlackBerry had become a company in crisis. Its market share had dwindled, its financial losses were mounting and its stock price was in freefall. The once iconic BlackBerry was on the verge of extinction. One of the critical factors in BlackBerry's downfall was its inability to adapt to the changing market. While other companies embraced touchscreen and app ecosystems, BlackBerry clung to its physical keyboard and tried to compete with a model that was rapidly becoming obsolete. The leadership struggled to find a clear direction for the company. CEOs came and went, each with a different vision for BlackBerry's future. This lack of consistent leadership led to confusion and indecision, causing the company to miss crucial opportunities for reinvention. The BlackBerry 10 operating system, while innovative in its own right, was introduced too late to make a significant impact. By then, consumers had already flocked to iOS and Android devices, and developers were less interested in creating apps for BlackBerry. It was a classic case of too little, too late. In 2013, BlackBerry's board made the difficult decision to explore strategic alternatives, including a potential sale of the company. The writing was on the wall, and the world watched as a once mighty giant faced an uncertain future. The story of BlackBerry's fall serves as a stark reminder that even the most successful and innovative companies can crumble if they do not continuously evolve and listen to their customers. It's a lesson that reverberates throughout the tech industry, where disruption is a norm and survival requires a relentless pursuit of innovation.